Don't move, don't move, don't move, don't move. Don't move. seems pretty short. Having those layers on, in fact the hassle of having to unfold the kimono makes me not want to go to the toilet, need to drink water, and walking in the clocks make things extra challenging. In the next part, we actually have our indoor shoot coming right up after a quick lunch. So this is Yume Yakata. You're looking at the main hall and they have different rooms for changing and makeup on the first, second, and third level. And here is the Kiyomachiya, the traditional Japanese house where the indoor shoot will take place. Alright, so back at the shop, they got me to change into robe, then hair and makeup. At last, we got to dressing up. And now to the studio, just look at this Shiromoku. It's so beautiful, right? And then adjustments again. They'll keep doing it to make sure your photos turn out nice and perfect without any flaws. Usually during this time, they get the groom to go out first for individual shots. And then finally, my turn for photos. We now change into the Iro Uchi Kake. And thank God, I didn't have to change out everything because the inside is the same except for the outer layer you see here. For this shoot, we spent about 62,000 yen. This price is inclusive of everything. Full 60 minute photo shoot, 100 plus photos, two different wedding kimonos, hair styling and makeup, plus taxi between the store and the studio. And you bet my photos turn out beautiful. Alright, 
right, so we got everything done in one full day. I got through three sets of dresses and two sets for Daniel. We both agreed to tank it through and just finish it once and for all. But all in all, it's quite an experience honestly. It really gets you into the Japanese vibe when you go to Japan. And I really have to applaud those couples who go on long wedding photo shoot trips. I mean, this one day was really exhausting for us. I can't imagine like, you know, for you guys who actually go on three day, five day, a week long photo shoot trips. Man, how do you even do that? Also, I think this experience is a test for the man's patience. And you can see this guy here. He has obviously passed out in the first half of the day. Last but not least, three great bonus tips for you. Number one, do your outdoor shoot in the morning and choose a less touristy place. I know there's the Fushimi Inari Shrine in Kyoto, but it's very hard to get clear, beautiful photos because there's always so many people. And trust me, your photographer would agree with you on this point too. Kyoto has many places to get the traditional Japanese vibe in your photos, so if you take your time to research, plan, and just stay away from those tourist traps, I'm sure your photos will turn out nice and beautiful as well. Tip number two, when you're booking a photographer, always ask for senior who has more experience. Well, you want to find someone who knows how to direct you into different poses, someone who makes you feel comfortable smiling at his camera, someone who has a good idea about face and body angles, because like your face, some people look good 2D, some people look good 3D, like for the body. Knowing how to angle the body might make a person look slimmer or sometimes rounder. So you want to get a guy who is advanced and experienced like that. And here is the contact for the photographer for who took my second shoot. If you like how my photos turn out, you know, for the red and white wedding dresses, feel free to contact him. You can always ask for him if you do actually get a wedding package with Yume Yakata. Tip number three. You can always ask for more photos than specified in the package with a small additional fee. So in the plan, they will tell you how many photos you're going to get for the price you've paid. These photos, of course, they're edited. The photographer will always take more than enough. And then through selection, he'll give you the better ones. And for me, I wanted more photos for the first shoot, the outdoor shoot, because I wasn't exactly satisfied with the photos I got. So I wanted to see whatever he took, whatever. I wanted to know like what was happening what was going on and I paid an extra of 55,000 yen to get the raw cuts. So right now I have about 120 photos from the outdoor shoot, 170 from the indoor one. I didn't have to pay anything extra for the second shoot which was a great experience and I highly recommend for anyone who's looking to take up a wedding photo shoot plan to just go with them. I hope you find this video interesting and helpful for your next trip to Japan. Let me know in the comment section how your photos and your experience turn out. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. It gives me strength to produce more interesting and beautiful content for you. And thank you so much for staying with me until the end. You know, wherever you are watching this, have an awesome, splendid day ahead. And I'll see you in the next one.